Hello, it's Jenna from McGuire. I recently redid my craft studio and I've been showing peaks of it over on Instagram. Few people have asked for a video tour, so I decided to do it but in bits and pieces. Today I'm going to focus on paper storage. In this video, I'll talk about how I store my 8.5 by 11 cardstock, my 12 by 12 cardstock, pre cut papers, and also my 6 by 6 pattern paper pads. Since most card makers seem to use 8.5 by 11 cardstock the most, I'm going to go ahead and start with that. So for 8.5 by 11 cardstock, I actually have two different ways that I store my cardstock. One holds all my colored cardstocks, and the other holds my most used cardstock. So let's start with the colored. I have them stored in a cabinet that actually happens to be with my 6 by 6 paper pads, which I'll show in a moment. Up in the top here, you can see my 8.5 by 11 cardstock, and I actually have each cardstock stored in a sleeve um, together. For my job, I need to know what the names of the cardstocks are, so I have these labeled, but you could probably skip that if you don't really need to keep track of what colors are what. So let me show you the sleeves that I keep them in. These sleeves are actually job ticket holders that I got at Office Depot. I'll have links in the YouTube description below so you can uh, check them out yourself. But I cut the top off and it's a perfect size sleeve for a bunch of 8.5 by 11 cardstock. You can see there's some room in there if you need to stuff more in. They're very durable and I just find this is easy to just grab a sleeve and pull it out. And I can also store smaller scraps in it if I wanted to. So you can see this one has a smaller piece in it where I didn't use the whole piece. Up in the corner I have a label using my brother label maker. I'll link to that also. And I put a label on both sides of the sleeve. So no matter which way I'm coming at it, I know what that color is very quickly. It's got the brand name and the um, color, the specific color name. I have been using this system for uh, probably about uh, six months now and I just love it. So here is the job ticket thing that I get from Office Depot and I just cut the top off and I found that this is very durable. You could get inexpensive thin plastic bags that you could store your cardstock in but this is a little thicker so I find it can take a little bit of a beating and hold a lot of cardstock and I don't have to worry about it popping open. Okay, so I keep all of these sleeves in some paper containers that I got at the container store. Again, I'll put the link in my YouTube description and over on my blog. And these are magazine holders. Now, I have them stored on their side so that it's um, the 11 inch width of the paper is from front to back, not top to bottom. But you could store them vertically if you want to. You could store it so that the color's on the back side and you just see that white on the front. But I store them so that I can quickly pull them out and get to my papers. So I have them stored horizontally with the closed end towards the back. But you could store these in any orientation that you wanted to. I really like that these holders were open on two sides and they're also very inexpensive so I could get several. In the cabinet above, I also have uh, additional colors of cardstock like vellum and blacks and whites. And that's, this is also where I store my sheets of felt. Okay, so here's a closer look at what these sleeves look like with the labels on both sides. You could probably do just one side, but I seem to come at it from both sides, so I thought it was more convenient to do it this way. And as I said, I've been using the system for a while now. I wanted to make sure I loved it before I shared it, and it's really working well for me. Now I mentioned there were two areas where I kept my 8.5 by 11 cardstock. This is the other. I have these built-in slots when I built my craft studio. And this has worked well for my frequently used cardstocks. I have my Nina white cardstock here, 12 by 12 white cardstock. I have Desert Storm craft cardstock from Nina. And I have typing paper in here. I also have random sheets of uh, colored cardstock that my kids like to grab and use. So this is just for my frequently used cardstock and it's really worked out well. Okay, so next up is 12 by 12 cardstock. I have this cardstock left over from my scrapbooking days, and I use it occasionally for DIY projects. I don't use it a whole lot for card making, but it's good to have on hand for other kinds of projects. Now my 12 by 12 cardstock and pattern papers are stored in these cropper hopper containers on some built-in shelves that I have in my studio. These containers I've had from cropper hopper for, oh gosh, many years. I've probably had them for 10 years now, and they've really worked well to protect my paper. And I can also easily grab one, slide it out, put it onto my desk, and find the colors that I'm looking for, and then slide it back in. It helps to protect the cardstock too. I really like this vertical orientation. Okay, now we have 6x6 six six paper pads. I always get questions on how to store these, and I searched and searched for the best method, and I found something I really like. I have it stored in the same cabinet as my 8.5x11 cardstock that I showed you earlier, and I have these containers um, from Linus. 
Now I have showed my stamp and die storage in the past. This plastic container is from the same line of storage bins and I'll have a link in my YouTube description and over on my blog. The container is perfect for holding 6x6 paper pads. It's a little bit wider than a 6x6 paper but that's nice because I can put my pieces that kind of have fallen out from pads or left over kind of tucked in the side and I can fit about 30 pads into one of these containers of you know average 6 by 6 paper pad size. And I have three of these in here and it's really worked out well for me. These containers are very durable, can hold the weight, and they're easy to just slide out, take to my work surface, and then put back when I'm done. Okay, the last bit of paper storage that I wanted to show you is how I store my pre-cut paper. Now, I will be honest with you, this has been a complete game changer for me. When I started using pre-cut papers, it really saved me so much time because I can just quickly grab them and use them without having to go cut up the pieces. Now, I have a drawer built into my craft room where I keep my pre-cut papers. And I'll tell you in a bit what papers I have in here. So here's my drawer. In this drawer, I actually have three Linus storage units. So this is from the same storage um, that I use for my clear stamps. I just showed you for my 6x6 paper and everything. I'll have links for you. And I have three containers in here. The first one is this one that has three compartments. Now, in these three compartments are my three most common used papers. In the front, I have my Tim Holtz watercolor uh, paper. Now, this watercolor paper comes pre-cut for you to four and a quarter by five and a half. So all I have to do is take it out of the package and put it in the slot. And that's my watercolor paper I use most often. The other two slots are for my Nina 80 pound, uh, which is my favorite white cardstock, and then the Nina 110 pound, which is just a heavier version. What I did with those is I bought a ream or a bunch of each of these cardstocks. I took it with me to FedEx or to Kinko's or any office supply store and asked them to cut them. And for a few bucks, they'll cut your 8.5 by 11 cardstock to whatever sizes you want. And I just had it cut to 4 and a quarter by 5 and a half, so I can easily grab it and go. Now this is my Nina 110 pound cut to four and a corner by 11 and I have it in one of those Linus containers. The reason I have this is I like to do top folding cards. So this is cut for a top folding card. All I have to do is put a score line down, by, down the center and it's ready to go. I love having these pieces pre-cut so I can just grab them whenever I need them and I can get to crafting very quickly. I highly encourage you to try this, to just take a stack no matter what the size it only takes a few minutes to go to Kinko's or FedEx or any of those places and have them cut it and it doesn't take much it doesn't cost much either you can have them cut to any size that would work well for you in the back left I have my Hero Art snow note cards these are just your classic note card four and a quarter by five and a half and I have these ready to go at any time now I'll be honest this is like my secret weapon this drawer is this is what saves me time and allows me to craft when I don't have a lot of time to do so and one last thing I wanted to show you. I do use a lot of Hero Arts note cards. I showed you my white ones a moment ago, but I do have my colored ones in some containers right in the drawer next to where I work. These are six by six by six containers, so they fit really nicely a five and a half inch wide note card. And I have a couple of them in my drawers here, and you can see all my Hero Arts note cards here. So this might be another size that is good for you. It's nice for the drawer that I have built in here that is about six inches tall, so this fits in perfectly. And again, this is from the same line of containers as everything else I've shown. I just really like that quality and of that brand. Now in the YouTube description and over on my blog, as I mentioned, I'll have links to all the different containers that I used. However, I highly encourage you to check out what you can find like at your TJ Maxx or your dollar store or Target because I'm sure there are containers that will work well for you too. Now one last thing, I know a lot of people are curious on what kind of cardstock I find that I like the best. For white, as I mentioned, I like to use the Nina white cardstocks. For craft, I really like the Desert Storm Nina cardstock. And for colored cardstocks, I like the Simon Says Stamp, Avriel, My Favorite Things, and Basil. So those are my favorite cardstocks. I think they're nice and smooth and great for stamping. So if you're looking for some good cardstocks, those are some to check out. Again, everything's linked below in my YouTube description. Usually I have multiple sources, so you can check different places out. Also, over my blog, I'll have links to other storage systems that I've shared in the past. And maybe you'll find something that will help you get more organized, too. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope you'll stop back by again soon.